Hello, in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of periodization in exercise program design. Uh, now, this is a broad, enormous concept uh, that really I could do hours and hours of lecture on to teach you how to do this thoroughly. So this video is meant to be a brief introduction uh, to get the idea of what periodization is and what the different training cycles are like. Uh, so first off, what is periodization and what is its purpose? Uh, so periodization are is planned variations in different training variables with the goal of continued optimized fitness gains and avoidance of overtraining. So basically it means that when we design an exercise program, whether it's for yourself or for someone else, you wanna look at the big picture. What is the ultimate goal that that person or that you are trying to achieve? And then we introduce lots of different variations and all sorts of different variables over the course of that training program to help you continue to achieve goals and to continue to uh, develop and, um, and continue to gain in your physiology, continue to get stronger, more endurance, whatever it is that you're trying to do without reaching a plateau. So without uh, getting to the point where you're just not improving anymore. And at the same time to avoid overtraining. So if we do too much of the same thing for too long, we will overtrain. So it's important that we have a lot of variety. Um, so when I mention these training variables that we are varying through periodization, I listed the ones I could think of here. There's probably even more than this that I didn't think of when making this slide, but this is a good start. Uh, so we can vary the mode or type of exercise. So cardiovascular versus strength training, or even, you know, it could be running versus cycling, um, or, you know, so all the different modes or types of exercise that we might use. Um, exercise selection and their order. So we can vary which exercises we choose and the order that we use them in within each workout in a broader training program. Um, so I just listed a few examples of some variations here, but really the list is probably endless in terms of ways that we could be considering how to choose different exercises or put them in different orders. Um, so like, for example, you might do a bilateral bicep curl for your workouts one week and then unilateral bicep curl when you get to that exercise next week. So that's just one example of something that you could vary. Um, you could do things like supersets or drop sets or all sorts of different variations in terms of exercise order and timing, things like that. Uh, horizontal versus vertical loading. So are you doing a flat bench press or are you doing a chest press machine? It's the same motion, but it's horizontally versus vertically loaded. So that makes it a little bit different. Um, you can vary the number of sets and reps that you're doing, how much weight that you're lifting in those sets and reps, uh, how long are your rest periods, or if at all, what is the intensity um, and we can vary intensity by varying all sorts of different variables. Uh, the tempo, so like, are you moving really slowly or are you focusing on negatives? You know, so there are all sorts of ways to vary tempo, uh, your time or duration. So like, how long is each workout? Um, or if you're doing cardiovascular training, how long are your intervals or um, that sort of thing? frequency, how often, how many times a week are you training, uh, or how many times a week are you training certain muscle groups, and then finally training uh, split of different muscle groups. So like you might have a cycle in your training program where you do a certain split where like maybe you're doing chest and tricep, back and bicep, and then the following cycle, maybe the next six week cycle, you might be grouping bicep and tricep together and group chest and back together, just as an example. So you can change up how you're splitting your muscle groups throughout your program. So those are just some examples of some variables that we can change. Um, but again, this isn't done haphazardly. These are planned variations that you are purposely addressing in advance so that you can make sure that you continue to progress throughout your training program. Okay, so your training cycles are broken into three different types of cycles. So your macro cycle, 
is the entire long-term program. So you're looking at the whole big picture. Now, for most people, this is a year-long cycle, um, but that can depend on whether your goal is time dependent. So like if you have a if you have an event coming up, if you're competing, you're running a marathon, um, then that might be the end of your macro cycle, whether that's nine months from now, two years from now. An Olympic athlete might be on a four-year macro cycle as they train and prepare for the Olympics. So how long the macro cycle is depends on the context. But the point is that it's your big picture, long-term program that leads up to whatever your goal is then we can break down that macro cycle into smaller periods that would be the meso cycles. Uh, so those would generally be six to 12 weeks each. So we'd have many meso cycles that fit within the macro cycle. So each of these meso cycles should be targeting a specific goal or a specific improvement that you're trying to make. So like, let's say that the big picture goal is running a marathon. So your macro cycle is geared towards the marathon being at the end of this training program. So then all the time that you have leading up to that is divided into meso cycles. And each meso cycle, you might focus on a different area for improvement. Um, so like you might have a meso cycle where you're working on improving your endurance so you can run longer. You might have another one where you work on strength because you want your muscles to be strong and help you avoid injury while you're training for your marathon. You might have another cycle where you focus on speed so you can get your time a little bit faster. Um, so we can't really accomplish all of these goals all at the exact same time. So we would focus on each one of these goals in its own meso cycle as we build up throughout our macro cycle up to your end goal of your being able to complete the marathon and maybe doing it with a better time or whatever it is that might be your specific goal. Uh, then we would take those meso cycles and boil those down to the nitty gritty. So that's where we're getting down to our fine details. So those would be the micro cycles. So within each meso cycle, we might break that into one to four week micro cycles. Um, and so that's where we get to the granular focus on your weekly training differences. That's where you'll get to actually designing what your workout schedule is going to be. How many times a week are you exercising? Um, what are you doing within each training session? So you might plan out your whole week and that would be your micro cycle that is within that meso cycle. And you would be planning what you're doing in that micro cycle in service of whatever the goal is for the current meso cycle that you're working on, which is in service of your big picture long-term end goal of the macro cycle. So they're all just sort of nested within each other this way. And those are your training cycles. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.